Okay, welcome back to GA Fan TV. My name is Aaron. I'm joined here by uh, Jerome O'Connell from the Limerick Leader, uh, here to go over the game from yesterday after Limerick ran out three point winners over Galway. Um, I suppose, first of all, Jerome, uh, in the end, it was a good win for Limerick. Uh, what were your thoughts on the game? Yeah, it was, it was a real battle, wasn't it? Um, you know, uh, even down the home stretch, you know, while Limerick had looked comfortable for a little while, all of a sudden, you know, it was a game that was back in the mix and uh, you know, I actually thought that maybe Galway were going to be the team that got that run of points down down the winning stretch. But um, thankfully, Limerick got, what was it, four of the final five points. Um, but um, it, it really could have gone any way at that point. You know, I thought when Evan Nyland got his two scores that, you know, Galway really had that little bit of momentum all of a sudden. And um, it was going to be their purple patch. But maybe Limerick's experience maybe just saw him over the line. And I think what was probably vital was that Galway never got back in front after you know the, the opening 15 minutes um albeit they got back level again deep into injury time but um you know i i think limerick will be happy just to get over the line semi-finals are all about winning you know you don't want to produce your best performance of the year in the semi-final and fall flat in the final so i think from that point of view limerick management you know they got over the line they got into the final they weren't at their best. There's plenty to work on. So I think management would probably be happy in that regard. Mm. Yeah, I suppose, the, you know, the most important thing really in these kind of games, like you just said, like in semifinals, quarterfinals, especially when you're at the stage where there's no back door, is just to win and then focus on the on improving the performance the next day. Um, I'd imagine it was tense enough, I suppose, watching it though, especially in those closing stages. Because like what you said, when Evan Island came on, you know, and hit those two fantastic points. Like, it really looked like Galway had turned the screw. So, I'd say it was tense enough watching those last few minutes anyway. Yeah, it was, yeah. And, you know, it, it was it was a bizarre kind of game as well. I mean, when you look back at the, the final stats, you see that Limerick hit 20, 20 points from play across uh, nine different players. Mm. And, and Galway had, had only half that, like 10, 10 points from, uh, f- from play across, you know, nearly 80 minutes of action. And, and yet, you know, they were within the one score at the end. Um, probably testament to, to, to Galway, in fairness, the way they, they hung on in there because it did look like, you know, Limerick were setting the, the, the tone for most of it. But uh, certainly, you know, those final couple of minutes, very, very reminiscent of, of the 2018 final um, and, you know, nine minutes of injury time two years ago. And again, yesterday, the, the board goes up and shows nine minutes. And, you know, obviously there was the nine minutes, in fairness, with the... Uh, the, the lengthy injury to, to Joe Canning, but, uh, you know, you, you just don't know what way it'll go in those couple of minutes. And thankfully, I suppose Tom Morrissey, you know, ended up getting the RT man of the match. And he, he was one of those that, that stood tall again in, in those couple of minutes of injury time, got the couple of uh, points. And, uh, and again, you know, the, the Limerick impact from the substitute bench, um, Adrian Breen yesterday, Peter Casey, Pat Ryan, David Reedy, you know, all got on the ball a couple of times in those nine minutes. Mm. Yeah, they just seem to have such a, a wealth of options coming off the bench. Like even Seamus Flanagan, I know he started in the game, but even in previous games as well, coming off the bench, he always seems to just provide that added tre. Um, even like like I suppose you know on on RTE and a few few other programs after they were kind of they were talking up maybe that Limerick probably aren't playing that well at the moment, like in the Watford game and then even in the Galway game. Do you think that's maybe a bit harsh in many ways that maybe maybe they've actually set the bar so high now after that Clare performance and some of the performances from two years ago that, you know, they're still in an All-Ireland final and they will be favourites. Do you think maybe it's a bit harsh kind of some of, you know, when you see some people coming out saying that they're actually, you know, not playing as good as they should be? Yeah, I, look, uh, probably. But I mean, the reality is, you know, they've beaten Clare, Tip, Waterford, Galway um, to get to an All-Ireland final. They're... 12 games now unbeaten in the, in the 2020 season um, already have three bits of silverware in the 2020 season um, you know so it's been quite a year for them and you know if if people think that they've done all that below par you know I'm not sure you know what more they can do is there more in them? Yeah I, I think so as well um, but I mean you're not going to the day you get all 15 at your best for 70 minutes. I'm, I'm not quite sure, you know, that exists maybe outside of, you know, FIFA or, or Fantasy GA or whatever it is. Um, and, and that's probably the strength of this Limerick team. 
you know, on, on Sunday against Galway, the full forward line probably didn't, you know, function as well as it would in other games. Um, certainly didn't return the volume of scores they would have in previous games. But then your your half forward line, you know, a step forward with Gerard Hegarty and Tom Morrissey, you know, returning, you know, double scores between them. Um, flip that over and look back at some of the previous games and they were probably getting, you know, a point or two and it was your your full forward line of Galan, Mulcahy and probably Casey that were getting the scores. So I think it's the strength of the team that, you know, players can have a bit of an off day and there's another two or three to, to step into it. Um, so I, I think that's probably the strength of them. Is there still a complete performance to come from Limerick? I, I think there is, but I mean... You know, any day you're getting a victory, you you take it. Um, I think teams are now a lot more aware of the Limerick system. So, you know, there, there's a bit of a kind of a basketball full court press appearing a, a lot against Limerick now, which is, you know, forcing them to change little things. And, uh, you know, that's probably testament to, to Limerick standing right now that the teams are setting up to try and nullify him a little bit. Mm. And I suppose, obviously, in the first half, there was... Um... You know, a, a situation obviously where Garode Hegarty um, slapped the the hurl on the back of Joe Canning's back, and there was some. A lot of people were saying it's a red card or it wasn't a red card. What was your opinion on it? Do you do you think it was a red card or do you think he was right to to get away with it? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I I, I hadn't a, a screening in Crow Park yesterday, and I didn't see it until I came home last night. And I'd, I'd you know spoke to people on the on on, on the phone afterwards and and seen a lot of uh, social media commentary on it. Um, and to be honest, I was expecting something a lot worse mm. when I when I turned on the video to, or the the recording to watch it. You know, I, I was a bit fearful that that you know maybe he could have been in trouble retrospectively with the officials. But but having watched it, I I, I genuinely and you know I, I'm from Limerick. Obviously, I would have a green tinted glasses. But but genuinely, I, I I felt the referee made the right call. I you know I I I played hurling. I, you've been in those challenges. I. I I, I, I genuinely didn't think that that, um, that Joe Canning had been struck. You know, he certainly, you know, he felt the imprint of a hurley, but it, it was in the course of a challenge. I, I, I actually, you know, I, I was fearful. I thought, you know, I was going to wake up this morning and see that Grote Hegarty was going to be, uh, you know, in trouble um, retrospectively, but but I, I would be shocked if he was. I, I actually thought it was the, uh, the, the, the right call. He got a Bang of a hurley um, in, in in a challenge for, for possession. Um, I, I'm not quite sure if maybe he even got injured um, as he hit the ground. I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, no, I I actually um, felt he did okay um, from from Grow at point of view. Aaron Glenn was involved um, earlier with a goalkeeper as well, and there was a bit mm. of a, a touch of a hurley there. And you know, from Aaron's point of view, that that was just pure silly. You know, I mean, absolutely no need to get involved in, in, in something like that. Um, you know, he, he didn't strike out him or anything like that. But I mean, once you raise your hurley, you know, to a, to another player, you're just asking for trouble. And it was totally unnecessary at the time. And, you know, with another set of officials or, or a different referee, you just don't know what happens. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, that that's something that, um, you know, maybe management or Aaron himself will just have a word and think, say, you know, look, what's the need there's no need for it you know just maybe you know not to be done again mm. yeah I suppose because a red in that situation for Aaron Glan definitely probably would have changed the game as well like going down to the 14 men um, like who would you say would have been your man of the match in the game um, obviously plenty of players to choose from a lot as you mentioned to it there nine different scores so who do you think was the, the real key difference for, for Limerick on the day yeah I, I, I thought I thought of the uh the, of the of the front eight that that Garo Tegarty and, and Tom Harris were were, you know, the two for me that that stood up. Um, Tom Tom Morris got the RT man in a match, and I, I think probably because you know he got he got early scores when they were crucial. When you know when when, when Galway built that five point lead, Tom was the one that was still you know bringing the game to him from a Limerick point of view. And and again, you know, down that home stretch when when the scores were needed again, he was the one that that stood up. Um, in between that, then I, I thought the two halfbacks again, um, Dermot Burns and, and Kyle Hayes had 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 huge games. You know the the amount of ball that they they won and, and drove forward was was just incredible. And uh, you know 
through the full back line for for a line of defence that had to be restructured, you know, just in the immediate um, couple of weeks before the championship, I, I thought, you know, Dan Morrissey and and Barry Nash probably have been, you know, outstanding in in all four games. And and again yesterday, you know, Barry Nash won an amount of ball and maybe was in that free role for for a little bit of the game uh, with, with Galway, you know, using an extra man back in defence. But I I, I thought. I, I thought the Limerick's back six, Tom Morrissey and Gord Hegarty, you know, they, they were they were the players for, for me yesterday. And I suppose like what your thoughts now on on Waterford in the final. Um obviously Waterford, like it's the first time Limerick and Waterford are playing each other in a all Ireland final at senior level anyway. Um so what are your thoughts going into that? Yeah, I I'd be honest, as 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 the game was, you know, unfolding on, on Saturday evening, um Watford and Kilkenny, you know, I, I think when Watford got the first three, four scores of the second half, for, for me, it was over. You, you just knew that they were in that kind of vein of form that they just weren't going to be stopped. And I, I actually found myself, you know, kind of hoping that maybe that Kilkenny might sneak a late goal or two to, to win it because um, you could just see the Watford team growing in stature. I've absolutely no doubt that, you know, when they got back to, to Watford on Saturday night or Sunday morning or whatever it was, I mean, they probably feel an inch taller at this stage, you know. I mean, they they, they were just absolutely superb in, in that second half and it really was a case that every ball they hit was just flying over the bar. But, uh, you know, Stephen Bennett, Ty Dverka, um, Caleb Lyons, Austin Leeson, they've all um, they've all been incredible for him. And, uh, you know, I, I never really like having to play a team a second time in the championship. It, You know, it, it really mm. makes it, complicated from from an analysis point of view but uh i i think the team that limerick played in the monster final ha- has vastly improved because you know waterford have had two big victories in the championship and they, they've gone the last couple of years you know without any victories and um they, they're, they're going to be a real tough opposition absolutely brimming the confidence and and they're also going to be underdogs so i mean you know it'll, it'll be a almost a shot to nothing for them in, in Liam Cahill's first year as manager. Hmm. And I suppose is that the, the concern then as well, that I suppose Limerick will definitely have to be, because you'd imagine like Waterford will certainly probably bring that same intensity that they had in the Clare game that they even brought in the Kilkenny game in the second half, that Limerick will probably need to just step it up a notch maybe from their, from that performance against Waterford in the Munster final. Although they were always in control of the game, you would feel that Waterford will certainly bring another level. So certainly Limerick will have to probably step it up a level as well. Yeah, I think they will because, you know, Waterford can, can match Limerick with their intensity. Um, Waterford can match Limerick with their fitness. You know, they were still absolutely, you know, racing over the line in Crow Park on Saturday night. Um, what would also have pace? You know, it was really evident against Kilkenny, like the, the pace that they had. Um, you know, Jimmy Barron was just like a little dynamo in midfield. I mean, he was just absolutely up and down and, and leaving guys in his wake. Um, so, you know, it, it's going to bring, you know, a huge challenge for Limerick. Um, I think what will be you know, vital for Limerick, it will be, and Watford will get a purple patch, you know, every team will get a purple patch, but like if they get a purple patch again, you know, Limerick can't allow them to, to just do what, what they did in, in the second half. I mean, Kilkenny went missing really. Um, there, there was just no resistance um, to, to, to Watford just pouring forward at all. So um, I, I think there'll be lessons for the Limerick management to, to be learned there and it will be vital that when Warford get that purple patch that, that Limerick just, just don't open the floodgates and, and let them through like, like they did um, in, in the semi-final. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's a huge thing for Limerick to, to be in two All-Ireland finals in three years, but to, to win two in three years would be massive. And, you know, I, I, I know, of course, that history and, and, you know, the hunger in Warford would be absolutely huge. Um, for for the weight they've had for the for an All Ireland title, but um, I, I I just expect Limerick to be really focused um for this, and uh, you would hope that the performance that they will need will will, will come from them. Mm. And I suppose there, like you touched on, obviously like two two All Ireland finals in three years, and if they win it, that's two in three years. Um, and I've seen even some comparisons even with like John Coyley and Brian Cody and, you know, this young Limerick team kind of with the young 
Kilkenny teams of the past. Like, do you see that comparison yourself even? And do you think that maybe in the next, you know, four or five years that you could see Limerick really dominate the All-Ireland scene and maybe even win a few back to back I mean I'm sure look listen they'll definitely just be focusing on the next one for now but certainly looking forward do you think the potential is there for Limerick to, to go on a bit of an all Ireland run yeah I mean the, the age profile of the team would, would suggest that there's none of them going anywhere for the next couple of years you know and uh, Limerick have had a couple of successful minor teams with, with a few nice hurlers to come through in the next couple of years I mean just looking you know John Kiley's in his fourth year now Limerick have uh, won an All Ireland the first in 45 years, won back to back Munster Championships, back to back Allianz Leagues. I think they've, they've thrown in two, uh, two Munster Leagues there along the way as well. Um, you know, they, they've now won, they've now won six, no, what have they won? Five of the last six competitions that they've entered. Um, you know, beaten in, in the other one previous to that by Whisker, by, by Kikini in the semi final. Um, so, I mean, they're competing. For every com- competition they enter now, they're probably the favourites. You know, for every competition they enter, um, as I said previously, they're, they're 12 games unbeaten in, in 2020. You know, will it be you know the unlucky 13 uh, on the 13th of December, as it turns out? Um, but you, you know, it, it's it's a winning mentality that John Kiley and Paul Kenurk and, and others in the management have instilled in the group that that you go out to win every game. You know, they they haven't been going into Monster leagues or taking a few rounds of the Allianz League easy or anything like that. There, there's a real, you know, hunger to to win everything that they can. And I mean, look, it's 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 a great spell for Limerick hurling right now. But I mean, you only got to go back a few years when we couldn't win a game. And you know, mm. the likes of Graham McCahey is there since 2009. Um, he was playing in his fifth All Ireland semi final yesterday, was it? Um, you know, had had lost more than he had won. Um, so I mean, you know, this is still new to Limerick. They're they're still hungry for success because, you know, we haven't had the success. Um, we we're we're talking about two All Irelands in seventy odd years. Um, so you know, if, if they're to go on and try and win more, yeah, I, I'm I'm sure the hunger will be there. The, the talent will be there, but you know, I, I think as you said, right now the the first big hurdle is is certainly Watford in uh, two weeks' time. Yeah, perfect. And um, undoubtedly, it should be uh, should be one hell of a game, especially. Uh, well, cheers, Strom. Anyway, for coming on, I appreciate your time. No hassle at all.